Hi everyone. As I've said before, I will never ask for any financial assistance on this channel, but I will ask that you take a moment after the video to witness these two wonderful acts of God I am about to share. I'm reaching out for some support and assistance for our brother in Christ, Johnny Newkirk. Johnny has an incredible testimony, a true life of overcoming trial and adversity through drugs and addictions to losing literally everything, including his family and his possessions. Yet throughout it all, he found God, picked up his Bible, and has since been doing missionary work in Uganda and helping to do the Lord's work in spite of all he has been faced with. Johnny is just starting to raise money to be full-time in Uganda and to continue his work. So I ask, if inclined, can you please help support a true spirit-filled brother in Christ? Any amount, no matter how small, will greatly help to see this wonderful act of God fulfilled. Let's help Johnny reach his goal, for it is clearly God's will for his life. Another group that is close to my heart is Light of God in Darkness. They're doing some amazing work in Kenya and across the world. True soldiers for Christ at the grassroots level, working in the communities to strengthen their resolve and helping the needy in any way that they can. Please support these wonderful sisters in Christ. And once again, no matter, no amount is too small. For those of us that live in abundance, let us help another. Praise God for his workers. Glory to God and Maranatha. Hey guys, I'm back for another video. Um, this one was completely unplanned. It was something I came across while I was working on the seven churches and some of Revelation. And so it seems like I'm constantly um, being led back to look at Luke, Mark and Matthew and some of the differences there. So uh, today we're going to talk about the parable of the sower. And so we're going to go into that. Right. Okay. So, the parable of the sower. Okay, so I actually I was looking for some scripture um, around the rod of Jesse, and I started coming across links to. I just noticed a couple of lines different for the parable of the sower that came up when I was searching. And it just clicked with me and I thought, maybe that's different too. And I'm sure that if I went from the start of Luke, Mark and Matthew all the way through to the end, I would find many of these. This one is, there's a lot in this, um, but I found this to be really, really interesting. So um, just wanting to share this with you and let's go. All right, so I'm going to start with Matthew and I'm just going to go line by line. So there's two sections of the parable. So there's the parable where um, the parable is told, okay? And then there's a parable when Jesus answers and explains the parable. So we're going to go with Matthew to start with line by line. So Matthew 13, 3. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Okay, so that's that's... Pretty straightforward in Mark. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. Okay, he doesn't mention the parables, but he just mentions there's a sower. Okay, then in Luke, a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, he starts to talk on the next part. Okay, so he goes straight into the, the inf information. Some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Okay, so let's so let's combine the two lines. So the sower went out to sow in Matthew, and he went he sowed some seeds. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls came up and devoured them. Okay, so in Matthew the fowls came up and devoured them. We learn that they're fowls. In Mark, okay, he sowed. Some fell by the wayside, and some of the fowls of the air came up and devoured it. Okay, so we get more information, fowls of the air, okay, the fowls of the air. Then in, in Luke, we find that it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it. Okay, so now I haven't, you know, my, my initial impressions were trodden down. It's kind of like they were tested, okay, but, you know, let's let's dig into this more and I'm going to apply more 
you know, time to look at this as well. This I've only just kind of uncovered this this morning. Okay. Some fell upon stony places, this is in Mark, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. Okay. Then in... Oh, sorry, that was in Matthew. And in Mark, um, some fell onto stony ground, not stony places, but stony ground, where it had not much earth, same. And immediately it sprang up, kind of the same because it had no depth of earth, the same. When we see the same lines, it's confirmation that that's what it means, okay? Then we go to Luke, and some fell upon rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. It was completely different, okay? It required water for Luke, okay? Um, it's not saying that it needed roots here, or anything. It's saying that it needed water okay who carries the water who's the who's the provider of the living water it needed it okay that's all it needed that was the main thing that needed um okay and you know it, there's different ways to look at it but that is certainly you know it's interesting it lacked moisture okay and when the sun was up they were scorched because they had no root and they withered away in matthew in Mark, when the sun was up, it was scorched because it had no root, it withered away. Okay, it doesn't say that about Luke at all. Okay, there's no mention of no root because it had deep roots. Those in the Luke group had deep roots, they had strong belief, conviction, strong faith. Okay, when that seed was sown, they immediately took the word, okay, and it just went out of depth to them. Uh, out of depth it wasn't on the surface it wasn't something that would you know suddenly face some sort of trial and then just be completely and utterly you know um they wouldn't deny jesus suddenly they had that depth there okay okay and likewise with the groups okay so with matthew some fell among thorns and thorns sprung up and choked them okay so that's a common trait and we see this Okay, we see this in Mark, and some fell among thorns. Thorns grew up and choked it, and yielded no fruit. Okay, so for Matthew, they just fell among thorns, the world, okay? And it just choked them. It just, there was no fruit there. Um, and But for some in Mark, for some, it yielded no fruit. Okay, then in Luke, also some of Luke, the Luke group, some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Okay? So, it doesn't mention not yielding any fruit here, okay? It just says that some fell away, okay? Some fell among the thorns, okay? And then we, we see, and when we go into the answers, this will make more sense, okay? We go back to Matthew, but others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. This is really important, okay? Because there is a section there is a section of some of these people, okay, during this time period that fell into good ground. There's going to be some people that come out of this sect, this time period, and they'll have brought forth fruit. And some will be 30-fold, some will be 60-fold, some 100-fold, some small, medium, and large, you know, levels of fruit, a, a measured of fruit, okay, that they'll bring forward. Because they'll wake up and they'll realize, okay, but the point is, is that initially they didn't have deep roots and that's why they're in this group, okay? They didn't have the depth of faith when they, were, when they heard the word. They didn't recognize it, but they will during this time period, okay? And we see the same um, in Mark. So others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased in that same measurement, okay? 30, 60, and 100, Okay? But then we see in Luke, okay, and immediately, and others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold, just bang. This group, okay, it's bearing fruit once they've received that, okay, when it's fall, the seed's fallen on good ground, bang, a hundredfold that, okay, because this group, deep roots, you know, all they needed was some water, all they needed, that, all that good soil needed was some water. Okay, and that that's just the initial part of the parable. So if we go into the answers now, okay, of what 
of what Jesus said. And, you know, this is quite long. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to cut it short and go to my points, okay? And I encourage you to read it because it'll take too long to go through this. I want to keep this video short. Okay, so some of the points. What he says here, okay, to the Matthew group, he says, I have given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, but to them it is not given. I speak to them in parables because they see and hear not, neither do they understand. Okay, whoever, whoever has to him shall be given, he shall have more abundance, but whosoever hasn't from him shall be taken all the way that he has. Okay, then this is a key point. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Okay, I don't know if I'm saying that properly. And then it immediately references Acts 28, saying, Go unto this people and saying, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see. And not perceive. So it says these exact words, okay? Um, uh, where is it here? Seeing out you, they shall see not, and hearing they shall see not. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so basically, like, what he's saying in here is that, um, you know, if we read Acts 28, it says, Go unto the people and saying, Hearing you shall hear. And shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people, talking to these groups, okay, that are being preached the prophecy of Isaiah, your people, the heart of this group is wax gross, and the ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Okay, it is. And then he starts talking about the um, salvation of the Gentiles, okay? But the point is, is that he mentions the prophecy of Isaiah here, and when you look it up in Acts 28, it's saying it applies to this group, okay? We talk in parables, but they don't hear or understand. They don't see, okay? They don't understand what I'm saying to them, okay? He doesn't mention good ground in this section at all. There's no good ground, okay? But he does mention in the prophecy of Isaiah that those that, uh, where is it? Um, those that should be converted, I should heal them, okay? So there is a way back for these people, but I'll tell you what, they're getting rebuked. This is a rebuke, okay? There's also another reference to Isaiah' prophecy, you hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Okay, you get my point. And he called the multitude and said to them, Hear and understand. You get the point, right? He's rebuking them in this parable in Matthew. Okay, he's rebuking them. And he's, he's saying, and this key point, I give you the, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, what does it say in Luke and uh, in Mark and Luke? Something completely different. Okay, let's have a look. Okay. Now, keep in mind the Mark group. Okay, the Mark group's the lazy church, the, the sleeping church, still God's sheep. Okay, we got they've got to be woken up by the workers. Okay, I've given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Okay. Different. Okay, I'm sharing different things with you. Okay, and he he says all these things are done in parables to fulfill Isaiah's words. Okay, that seeing they may that seeing they may see and may not perceive, so they may understand it or they may not. Okay, it's a little bit different. Okay, the other group won't. They won't see or they won't understand. They won't hear. They won't understand. But this group may. Okay, and their sins should be forgiven. I'll forgive you of your sins. Okay, and so that's Acts 28 applies here. Okay, Jesus also asked them the question, do you not know this parable? Then how, you, how will you know all parables? Okay, and then he says something different here. He says, the sower soweth the word. Okay, though that soweth, though, those that are sowing the seed, sowing the word of God. Okay. We're sowers of the word of God. And we sow it to other people. We plant seeds. 
okay? All seeds need water and good soil to grow, okay? You know, there's a reference I found in 2 Corinthians 9.10. Now he that ministereth seed to, sh but to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown. Okay. Alright, so he starts breaking this up a little bit here. And he says, And these that are by the wayside where the word is sown, when they have heard Satan cometh, and take away the word that was sown in their hearts. What he's saying is that, like, with this group, they've got the word sown in, okay? But it doesn't take much. As soon as Satan comes along, okay, it says here, um, the word was only sown shallow. When Satan comes up, it's taken away. And I question whether it means, that's why it mentions the fowls of the air, or the fowls of the air, like, because they're, they're, they're not sown deep. The, the birds just come along and take the seed. I'm not sure. Um, but that kind of made a little bit of sense. But it immediately sprung up because they had no root. Okay, so this group, while they, while they absorb the word, they don't, it's not, you know, some from this group are not absorbing it um, and able to, able to keep it in trial, okay? So we see it here, and these are the, they likewise which are sown under stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it re with gladness, yet have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution arise, ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So if we look at when persecution happens, what the word offended means is to deny. Okay. If we go to Matthew, Peter answered and said unto them, Thou all men shall be offended because of thee, yet I will never be offended. You know, Peter, Peter said that. Uh, offended is to deny. Okay, if you look it up in Greek, it's to deny. So, basically he's saying, soon as things get tough, this group are going to deny me. Because, they're, you know, they're still living in the world, right? They've got their comforts and luxuries. And those sort of things. So, you know, obviously, if you look at there's these groups, there's an initial stage stage where we are assigned to these groups. Okay, we're we're assigned to these groups based upon our on our walk. Okay, and what we've done, our choices and our decisions and our faith and all those things. But this is talking after the fact. So once you're in this group, and Things start to happen, okay. If you're in the lukewarm, lazy church and you're not paying attention and you're not, and you don't love God, like love God and waiting for Jesus and you're not all those things, right? You're not aware of the times you're in. Um, you fall into this category, or you will fall into this category. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in. So he's explaining here, when he mentions those that are sown among the thorns, they're the ones that are living in the world. You know, it, this, the thorns choke the word. They bear no fruit. Okay? The cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. There are some from each of these groups that bear fruit. Those will be harvested and saved. Okay, so we think about these groups. There's going to be people that, that bear fruit. Okay, this is really cool. I like this. So, and he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not be on a candlestick? He's carrying a candle. He hasn't lit it. Okay, he's brought the candle, but it, there's no mention of the candle being lit. Okay, there's no light there. Where's the light? It's not set on a candlestick. You know, he's he's just brought the candle. And he's talking about, you know, to put it under a bushel or a bed. Okay, and then we talk about the nothing hidden manifested. Okay, we also see different wording. Nothing hid shall not be manifested. Neither is anything kept secret that should come abroad. Alright, so let's look at Luke. 
Okay, I know this is a lot to take in, um, and there's a, it's, it's quite wordy, but it's important to understand that there are clear differences between the three groups because that's what we're trying to understand with this whole study. Okay, so let's look. We see again in Luke, given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others is given parables that seeing they might not see, hearing they might not understand. It doesn't mention forgiving of sins with Luke. It doesn't need to. Okay. He's explaining to them why he gives parables. He's giving them the truth here. Then he says something interesting. The seed is the word of God. Okay. He doesn't mention that here in Mark. He says, the sower soweth the word. He talks about who sows. Okay. And yeah, and then here, he doesn't even go over that in Matthew. Matthew's not a good group to be in. Okay. Those by the wayside, those that hear, so the ones that do fall away, the devil takes away the word out of their hearts unless they believe and be saved. So what he's saying here is that there are still people from this group, okay, that are going to fall away. Because the devil takes away the word. Okay, the word doesn't run deep. But they have to believe to be saved. You have to have a depth of faith. It's all about faith, okay? They on the rock here receive the word with joy. Okay? have no men There's no mention of a root. Um, but th what they're saying is that if the seed falls on the rock, obviously how can it... Um, how can it grow? Okay, it has no root. In time of temptation, they'll fall away. And those that fell among thorns, are they which have not heard, oh sorry, are they which have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life. Okay. They bring no fruit, okay. Those on good ground are they have an honest... This is really important, okay? This is really, really important. Those on good ground, because he gives away something here that you don't see, okay? Um, those on good ground, uh, those with an honest and good heart, we don't hear that anywhere else, okay? Because this is the group that his first fruits are coming from, his bride, okay? His worker bride. They have to have an honest and good heart. They've heard the word and they can keep it after they've heard it. Okay, as soon as they heard it, they've kept it. They haven't haven't strayed, okay? They haven't abandoned the word and run back to the world. And bring forth fruit with patience, okay? This is really important. Their patience brings forth fruit. Okay, patience is a really important thing. And I won't get into it, but it's something that I've had to work heavily on. And recently, I was actually told to work heavily on my patience. I need to stop being so eager, so keen, okay? Trying to, you know, just... And also my lack of patience with, you know, with some people as well. I'm not, I'm not the most patient person. And so that's something I know I need to work on. And when I read this, I just went, thank you. Because that's really important and it just confirms with me why I heard what I heard about patience. Okay. So, those that lighteth a candle, covered it with a vessel. They do not put it under a bed, covered it with a vessel. It's very interesting, isn't it? Terminology. Do not put it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick. They which enter in. Okay. They which enter in may see the light, may see Jesus, he is the light, and there's a lot more to this light, this is a whole video, okay, to get into the light, when we go through John the Baptist, and we go through all that stuff, um, but let's just keep it simple, okay, and the light is, is many things, but he is the light of the world, so we're going to leave it, leave it on that. Now, I believe in this last line, um, he 
he doesn't say enter in there, does he? A mark. They which enter in may see the light. That's a really important line there as well. All right. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Um, it's a very interesting one, this one. Um, I found another one this morning as well, which I'll be sharing as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I just, I want to share these small little snippets and put them out there because each one contributes to an obvious conclusion that these books are speaking to different people and you can see it. Um, there are significant differences and not just a small difference, there's significant differences. Um, and it's not just a difference. You always see the loot group as the favoured group. When I say favoured, I mean as doing the, the things that he's asking us to do. Um, you always see the Mark group um, as the lukewarm, okay? They they promise salvation, okay? But there's always something that they're not given or they're, they're given less information or they're... You know, there, there's always an element of a mild rebuke, but in Matthew, it's always a heavy rebuke. Um, or, you know, if it's not a rebuke, it's just not in, an inclusion because of lack, there's clear lack of faith in the Matthew group. You think about all the churches over the decades that have been teaching from Matthew this whole time, okay? This is really sad. And you think about it, and that's the word that they're following. They're basically sealing their fate because they're not looking at all the other elements, okay? They're, they're just like predominantly focusing on Matthew as their main source of teaching and misinterpreting it, I believe, okay? Um, obviously, there's more to prove here. Um, I'm not trying to solve the Bible. Don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to, you know, ascertain a point. And I believe that the more I look at this and look at other contributors who, you know, such as Ministry Revealed and other channels that also have the same or similar belief that there's just so much evidence. And I'll continue to look at this and I really enjoy it and I'm learning. And these parts of the Bible are sticking with me now. So, hey, if all I get out of it is maybe, you know, um, a few people that, decide to pick up the Bible and they find that when they look at this method uh, and they look at the books, Luke, Mark and Matthew in this way, that it helps them to understand better um, and it helps me to understand better and grow. If I felt one person, then this is all worth it. So, um, yeah, it's good fun and um, we'll see what we'll see what we uncover next. All right. God bless, guys.